everybody always talks about city girls this, city girls that, sexy red this, sexy red that, but did you forget there was a Trina? <laughs> Still is. This move, this blue is not really matching with this blue, nor that blue, or that blue, but blue who? <laughs> guys welcome back or welcome to the channel if you are new so today <laughs> I'm going to be doing nothing over $10 like I said in this video there was maybe a thing or two that crept over a little bit of a $10 fee <laughs> like it may have been like $10.99 but we was still right there that's all that matters drugstore some are indie brands of course as well not just like drugstore that you can go drive up to Walmart, Target, Walgreens, CVS to get. Some of these you will have to, you know, buy online. I love how it turned out, minus the lashes, because the lashes are clashing a little bit. When you have like bangs like this, and then you have lashes like this, let's just get started on this video. All, right. all the products that I'm using today, I'm probably gonna put the price of them on the screen just so we are a little bit more accurate with the price. I'm gonna prime my eyes with concealer because all of the eyeshadow primers that I have that are affordable, um, they're all over ten dollars under 15 except the p louise is that yeah that's under 15 too but yeah regardless they're all over 10. the two concealers i have is the black radiance true complexion concealer long wear concealer i think this is in a lightest shade and the wet n wild mega last incognito concealer in a shade medium honey let's see the black radiance one and this dirty sponge that I forgot to clean. Let's go into the Profusion Sienna's palette. This used to be like my ride or die type of palettes, these Profusion ones, because they are some of the best palettes. Oasis First, which is this peachy tone. I haven't seen it in a while because I go into the makeup section a lot, but they used to sell Profusion eyeshadow palettes, the ones in a tin in the tip can packaging. <laughs> Places like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross, but I haven't seen them in a while and I never liked them because of the packaging. I told you guys it's like the packaging that draws me in and if I don't like it, then I won't get it just because of the packaging. Like I don't even care how good the quality is. I never liked those and then when I seen that they had, was selling these at like Walmart and Target, I was like, oh yeah, I love that. $10 for these palettes and then their bigger palettes are a little bit more I actually think that Profusion went up on their prices, so I don't even know on the website if these are still $10. I'm gonna go into this shade right here called Fearless. It's almost like the same. Oh yeah, it does. It does make quite a little bit of a difference. I'm gonna do like a peachy tone look on the eyes today, the lid crease, and then like a pop of kind of like baby blue. I did say in my last video that I have no inspiration, no <laughs> will to do a colorful look, but we'll do it today. It's this shade called Groovy, which is a deep brown. This is a deep brown too, but this is warm tone, this is cool tone. And I already did a neutral look in my other video that was like neutral, but leaning a little bit more cool tone. And I'm just like applying this on the outer part, keeping it kind of low. I know that there is Profusion that has like an eyeshadow primer that I think is like $10. For the most part, I really don't feel like going out of my way to get something just because, you know, for a video or whatever. I don't typically reach for like the white eyeshadow primers too much. Combination of that shade Oasis again, and a little bit of Polite, which is a... Okay, so just like that, you guys see how like it gave me a more paler tone since I don't believe that I have like a pale peachy tone unless I do. Okay, so then I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of groovy and blend that on the outer part. This is the Joa Lash Uprising. Now, this mascara is $10.99, but of course, because it's sold at CVS. Well, CVS and Walgreens, to me, they're both equivalent to like Ulta because they sell makeup at a more expensive price compared to, dang, look at how good my lashes look, compared to like Target and Walmart. So you definitely want to shop around. You just have to get their more money in. I found that out when I was shopping for my Oma by Sharon C products after Walmart, um, 
discontinued. For lashes, I have this style from Morphe that's long. And then I also have these I Envy mink ones from the beauty supply store. These were about five or six dollars. These, um, I cut them too short, so I don't think I want them short like that, but I want the long ones that are not that full, so I think I'm going to double stack today. Where's my lash glue? Let's let this mascara finish drying, and then we'll look for the lash glue. I didn't want to pull out any of my Dollar Tree makeup today. We're, of course, like I said, going $10, but I don't want to go um, that low. Wild Primer Serum Hydrating Primer. Love this one right here. I feel like nobody talked about Wet n Wild's newer makeup. And to me, it seemed... Is that blonde hair? <laughs> to me, it seems like the Wet n Wild newer makeup that they launched was better than their older one. And even that Incognito Concealer was better. This right here is good if you have a dry skin. It is like a skincare in one maybe that's also why a lot of people didn't gravitate towards it because you know majority of people already have like their skincare routine and they don't feel the need to have makeup products that have skincare in there but to me the skincare and makeup is even better because it means that there's a lesser chance that it's going to break your skin out or irritate your skin so i'll take makeup products that have skincare benefits and of course i have bangs so we're not going to go up too high for foundation i'm going to be using the oma by sharon c flawless irl skin perfecting again do not go to walgreens or cvs if you want this on walmart site they still have the shades and they're like seven dollars i did pick up another one of these when it was on a clearance for a dollar something i think i already showed you guys but I want to use it again because I love this product. This is in the shade Honey Honey T4. Uh, a lot of people were like on a fence about it, but I love it. I think it applies better with a brush, but I'm just going in with a sponge. It's a really good shade match. They came out with a really good shade range for the product. Of course, Oma by Sharon C is the drugstore version of um, Oma Beauty, the higher end. So, you know, you already know she's going to come out with a good shade range, period. <laughs> I think what it is that the reason that people really didn't gravitate towards it is because it honestly does not know what it wants to be. <laughs> kind of like the um, newer Juvia's Place foundation where it doesn't know if it wants to be matte, dewy, semi-matte, natural, full coverage. Because, you know, usually when you put on a foundation, you'd be like, okay, so this is matte, it's drying, or this is dewy, this is, you know, whatever, whatever it is. You just know that that's what it's going to be. <laughs> but to me, this is long-lasting without being, like, overly matte and drying like you see and it's not dewy but it does give you like a natural radiance just like the Juvia's Place foundation set you know what I wonder is this like could we say that this is like a dupe for the Juvia's Place foundation maybe maybe not I don't know <laughs> black radiance one in the inner part since it's lighter and more yellow tone the wet and wild one outer part since it's deeper and a little bit more peachy tone and then for cream bronzer let's go in with this oma by sharon c one again on walmart even in store these were five dollars and something said <laughs> on cvs i checked and these were eleven dollars and 99 cents that's ridiculous that's a big jump and this is in a shade on point they only came out with like four shades in this range and there was like huge jumps for the bronzer so they did good with the shade range for the foundation but the bronzer there was too many gaps and i actually did hit pan on this i didn't even realize i need to keep going with this i don't reach for it because again it's not like a good shade and i also like my bronzer is like deep harsh <laughs> i've said it before i don't mind a harsh bronze look because it really sculpts the face i'm gonna actually stop applying cream bronzer for the nose because it just ends up looking too harsh and the palette that I'm actually going to use today for nose contour that I got from Timu, I love that for nose contour. It gives me a nice sculpted look. Don't apply cream and powder for the nose. All you need is one or the other. <laughs> Back to what I was saying about the bronzer. There's not a lot of bronzer options at the drugstore and e.l.f. was the first um, bronzer I've ever tried, like the drugstore, because they were the only ones that went deep enough. And then CoverGirl had went deep with their bronzers when they worked with, they partnered with Queen Latifah for her Queen collection. Dang, it seems like that was like yesterday. 
That was a minute ago. I don't know when it stopped recording, but I'm here. I'm sitting here trying to talk to you guys. So I'm gonna go in with the Elf Putty Blush in a shade Bahamas, little orange tone moment. Yeah, they had came out with that collection, but that bronzer was too deep in red tone, so I couldn't use that. Milani just launched a cream one that looks interesting. I think they only go with four shades, like the Oma one. And then NYX just came out with a powder bronzer. That one looks really good. I think it's called like the Butter Butter Collection, something like that. It reminds me of like the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. And they do have a nice shade range, but I don't know if there's like a shade for me because again, I like my bronzers to be a little bit more neutral tone. And it looked like their bronzers, the undertone for my shades would be either golden or rosy i don't know how to feel about the packaging of that new nyx bronzer because it looks like it's going to give you a hard time when you go to try to put your brush in there i need more like drugstore brands to come out with bronzers work with influencers <laughs> that's what a lot of these brands should start doing is if you ever struggle with knowing the shades and stuff partner with influencers that can actually help you like i think Too faced a while back had partnered with Jackie Ina, Mima Tang, somebody had partnered with her too, something like that, to bring out a better shade range. And that's what you have to do. Like that's what these influencers are here for. For powder, I'm gonna go in with the Maybelline Fit Me in a shade 20 light medium. Oh, I forgot to use my powder puff. I have not used a sponge to apply powder in a minute. I've been going like straight with powder puffs lately because they just apply powder so good. And also, with a sponge, the sponge just automatically feels like it picks up the product when you are laying it down anyway. So I think that that's another reason why powder puffs apply powder better. But I'm just going to apply this powder. It's a little too light, so I don't know how that's going to work. I'm going to use this Japanese, was this, ja yeah, Japanese brush. Because my Maybelline powder foundation, that's over $10, so couldn't go there. <laughs> going to have to just make do with this. Oh, this is such a nice brush. It applies it very, very lightly. For powder bronzer, I'm gonna be going in with the one that I got from Timu. This is Mafic in a shade number six. Love this bronzer. And I did, by the way, glue the highlighter back in. I used the E6000 glue. Like I was saying in that video, whenever your products like that come like sliding around, coming out of there, just go in with E6000 glue to press it back in and it's good to go or to glue it back in because it seems like a lot of these brands are using hot glue and over time that hot glue just kind of like breaks down where it doesn't stick anymore. Trust me, I noticed that um, my DIYs that I do for the holidays, like my doll houses from um, the Dollar Tree, the Grinch fell off. I was like, what the heck? Where did he go? That hot glue. Mm -mm. For nose contour, we're going to be going in with the Leto Piate palette from Timu. And it has the, oops, the shimmery highlighter, the brightening powder, the warm tone bronzer, and the cool, the neutral tone contour. So I'm going to be going in with the neutral tone contour and contouring the nose. Using the wrong brush. If I was using a better brush, that would have came out a lot better. I actually don't have any powder bronzers in the shade that I would like. I mean, not powder bronzer, but powder blush. So I'm going to go in with this Black Radiance Colorful Palette and use that orange tone and maybe a little bit of this yellow as well. Mixing them together for blush. Hmm. See? Really nice. For highlighter, I am going to go in with this Mafic one from Timu in a shade number two. And I'm actually going to spray my brush. I'm going to use the Milani Make It Last Jumbo Setting Spray, which by the way, the mini version is, um, I think it's right at $10. And this jumbo version is like $13, $12, something like that. So, you know, buy the small version. But of course, I bought the jumbo version because I was like, since everyone is always talking about how good that product is, I was like, let me go ahead and buy the jumbo version of it. And this is how the highlighter looks. In that Timu video where I reviewed this highlighter, I did say that typically when you spray glittery products like this um, with setting spray, it'll come out more wet 
on the skin or highlighter on the nose let's go in back in with this palette and use that highlighter that's in there i'm going to use a little bit of the brightening powder just to clean up the side of the nose this is such a nice um palette like really really nice because when i use the brightening powder in the abh contour highlight palette that powder like the brightening powder in there really really chalky but this is really smooth and it doesn't leave like a harsh cast on a um on a nose i go back in with the powder and clean it up on the side i just love like when you can glide it across and it's like really smooth that's my favorite part I went ahead and applied the Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive. I'm going to start off with the Morphe Lashes. Oh my gosh, I'm having <laughs> such a ridiculous hard time at applying these lashes. Like, I, this is why I said that I do not like applying lashes anymore with, like, regular lash glue. I strictly apply lashes with the, um, lash glue, dang, the lash glue liner. Oh my gosh, that was a nightmare applying these lashes, dang. And now I'm going to go in with the INV. Honestly, there should be enough glue on my actual lid where I don't even need to go in with extra glue for these lashes. Like I said, more than enough lash glue on my eyes. Before I go any further, I'm going to spray my face with a little bit of this. Now for the lower lash line, I'm going to start off with the LA Girl Shockwave Neon Eyeliner in the shade Fresh. Oh, I think I need to sharpen it. For the lower lash line, I think I'm going to tap this shade right here called T-licious. I wonder should I apply like an eyeshadow, oh shoot, an eyeshadow primer, so not eyeshadow primer, but like a thing so it stays. Oh no, this pack, pack pigment, <laughs> this palette is pigmented enough where I don't even have to tap concealer or eyeshadow base under there. On the lower lash line, I'm going to go in with the Maybelline Snap Scare in the shade Beja Blue. I did not want to use this one on the top lashes, of course, because the blue would probably come through. And then for the inner corner highlight, let's go in with this palette. This is the Romantic Beauty palette from um, Marshalls. And I'm gonna go in with this shade right here called Aqua. The other palette that I have that has blue in it that I think would go good was um, the Morphe one, but that one is like, I think that was like $20, even though I didn't buy it. Hopefully this goes good and it's like light enough. For the lips, I'm gonna start with the shade Oh shoot, I don't even know what shade this is. The number is not, oh, number five from Hessie Beauty. Oh, I can't get over how creamy that is. Like one swipe and it's on. <laughs> For lipstick, just to match the peachy vibe because I was actually going to grab one of my Juvia's Place lipsticks that's a peachy tone. Those Juvia's Place lipsticks are like $15, I think. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just going to go in with this PCU one. It's an orange in a shade 01. Oh, that is nice. That orange peachy shade looks so much better with this lip liner because in the video when I reviewed this lipstick, I wasn't really feeling it too much because it was with that cool tone dark lip liner. But this looks so much better with this. And then just to brighten it just a little bit, let's go in with Kiss New York lipstick in the shade number one it's a pale nude oh that is so nice oh my gosh i love that lip combination it kind of looks like the combination that i have on my eyes we do a lip gloss i do have this one right here this yellow tone one mm. i feel like lip gloss is gonna ruin it i'm also not too sure how i feel about these lashes now <laughs> They are like 
dramatic. I'm gonna keep it anyway. I don't even care. I'm not going to switch out the lashes because we have come to the end of this video and if I go in that room and try to find some other lashes, I'm going to flip out. I need to be careful the way I cut my lashes so I won't have to do something like this. I think it's me it may be the Morphe lashes that's kind of throwing me off because they're giving me claw vibes <laughs> the way they're looking. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell since the other lashes are on top of them. It's crazy. Let me zoom in of course so we can see this look up close. Alright, so this is how the look turned out. Only thing I will say is that I notice a difference between the way this powder applies and removes versus the ones from Timu that I just got. Remember I said how smooth and buttery they were? They um also, they don't leave like, I don't know if residue is the right word, but we just gonna use it for now because I don't have time to think of something else. <laughs> and you can tell like there was powder right here even though I removed it. It's like I thrice removed it. <laughs> I like, um, you know, brushed it off and then I sprayed the spray and you can still like see that harshness from it baking. The other ones are so finely milled that they just blend in and they don't leave it looking harsh like this does. But other than that, I love every product that I use. And of course, everything that I use was really affordable. Under $10, we had some things that crept over a little bit. But besides that, that is the end of this video. Let me zoom you guys out. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!